Hi, welcome back to the Arcade Repair Tips video series. Today we're going to talk about how to check and test an old school power supply. Now in the past we've talked about these uh, switchers here that are very common in today's games and I think most of you guys probably have this down. They're usually nice and labeled neat for us. But what gets a little tricky is when we talk about the old school. This particular one came out of a Miss Pac-Man game and we can look at it and tell whether it's good or not. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to look at the different parts that are involved. The first thing we see is here is our power coming in and then it runs into this guy. A lot of people wonder what is this box right here. They don't go bad very often but I have seen one go bad before. This is the AC filter. A lot of games in the early 80's and stuff had these to keep from interfering with AM radios and such like that. Uh, but uh, even when you buy a new one, this is a good thing to have. This AC filter right here will come in. You'll have 120 here. So we can, first thing we want to do is measure our voltage coming from the wall. And you'll measure these outside leads right here. On ours, it's black and white. One is your line and neutral, and then the other is your, the green is your ground. There's our 120 right there, 116.5, which is real close. Then it comes over to here. Now, a lot of you are, are asked before, how to know the difference? One of these is the isolation transformer. The other one is the, the power supply or the transformer. And you wonder, what, how do you know the difference? Well, is we'll show in a picture here in a minute when we turn this one around. This one will have AC coming in, and then out of the back side or the rear end of it will be the other AC lines going out to your fuses and stuff. This guy will have AC coming in down here, but only AC coming out up here going to your monitor. So the one that goes to the monitor doesn't have anything on most of them back here, this one is your uh, transformer, your isolation transformer that goes to your monitor. This is your transformer going to your game, which gives the voltage that we need. It reduces this AC voltage from like 120. We're going to get a lot less voltage going over here to our fuses. Okay, now you might notice there's quite a few wires around here. Mine are labeled. And uh, sometimes you'll have labels and sometimes you won't. Sometimes you're just going to have to find between the wires to see if you can get it. But this one right here is the zero volts. is this red wire. And we have seven volts. 7.15 right now coming here. We have seven volts here. And I think this is 12. 11.74 here. So another thing that we can do is we can hold this on this side and go across this fuse right here on the other side of that fuse and we're reading 7 volts. That tells me that that fuse is good because power is going all the way through it. If I measure here, I get 7 volts too. 12, that's my 12 right there. So we're good right here. So the fuses are good and we have power that goes all through here. Now you might also remember we call this one a switching power supply because you have the AC coming in, the DC going out. Well on this one it doesn't really switch it to DC, it just steps it down. So the AC is, and so you're, the question that you might have is, well how does it get to DC on my game? Well a lot of that has to do in the old school games with parts like this, like on our AR board. If the AC comes in, it has some diodes and stuff, that, and it switches to DC. So when you measure, there's several test points on here. You see these little tabs that are sticking out. This one's labeled ground. Then we see 35 volts AC up there and 22 volts DC here. So if you, And then over here is a ground. And so if you want to test your AR board past your power supply, so you're going to have AC voltage going up to here, then you're going to put it on these tabs. So I got my black lead here on my ground and I'm just going to test right here for my 22 volts DC there or I can check for the AC here 
And so these test points right here, here is a 22 volts DC here. That's the positive. This is a negative 22 over here. And that's how we can tell if the AR board is actually getting power and doing what it's supposed to do. It's going to switch the power out over here and go to our centipede. Now, Ms. Pac-Man does it on, an, on the main board. Okay, here we have our Ms. Pac-Man board. And as you can see, we can, we'll need to test its voltage right at the board. So according to the pinouts, we'll find its ground. And then look for the 7 volts right there according to the pinouts that you guys have looked up or you know by your manual. So that's how we're going to check the voltage here. We're going to check it there and make sure that we have voltage. Then you got some diodes and things that change it down there, but for the most part, the AC in the old school power supply doesn't switch before it gets here. It comes all the way up here, so this will be AC voltage that uh, we run up here from the old school power supply. So I know a question that might be going through your head now, well, what if my old school power supply is bad and I want to run this switcher up there? Well, the fact is it will work. You can put this on there and just run the DC voltage straight up to your board and it will work. While we're talking about checking power and on power supplies, we wanted to show you real quick about checking it at your board. Because you know, everything what really matters is how much power is actually getting to this board a lot of times your power supply will be reading okay but in the massive amount of wiring and things that gets here you might not have voltage or your power supply could be fine and something off this board could be draining some voltage so here's our JAMA harness as you can see we've plugged it in and there's the pins right there this is what we talk about cleaning with the pencil eraser or with the brush you don't want to wipe that <clears throat> coating off but you want to make sure that that's good and clean we'll plug this in here okay now if you'll notice that according to the JAMA wiring harness the first couple pins are ground so you can either put it up inside of here like so and then check your 5 volts here you really have to stick this in here some ways it's better if you could come across here this one has these nice little holes that you can check right there. Or you can actually take the trace on the other side and follow your traces to where they go. And that voltage, there's 12 volts coming in right there. You could test that point right there. Put your black lead on your ground over here. And then your red on that 12 volts. And you could check it right there at your first component. And just for just for quick we can even tell if this board is working if you got power to it sometimes if this component has 12 volts coming in but the next component doesn't have 12 volts and a lot of times you know that that one is bad that capacitor is bad just a simple way while we're in here showing you this so anyway we want to find our points our 5 volts negative 5 plus 12 and we want to read it actually on the board so if you can't <clears throat> read the board a lot of times you can take it and read straight at the very end of these pins like that with the harness plugged in you can check your voltage right there again thank you guys for watching some of you may remember that we actually have shot this video in the past and that's the mistake that I made was in explaining this sometimes it's hard when we're talking and not really thinking about what I'm saying. I did say that it was DC voltage coming out and it switched it. This doesn't, is not a switcher. This is. But I hope that you have a better understanding of it now. We didn't mind reshooting the video. One thing that helps us, even ourselves, to think about it and then to, to, to do it like this. So maybe this will help you understand a little bit better. Well, you guys always know if you have any questions or comments or anything, just call or email us or go to our Facebook page. We just want to thank you again for watching Arcade Repair Tips video series now in high def.